Hi, this is Rob Hopkins here at home under lockdown. Uh, at home you can see uh, it's my vegetable garden over here uh, growing in the rather lovely sunshine uh, that we've been having. I think this lockdown would have been so different if it had poured with rain the whole time. And uh, it's eight months since I was last in Strasbourg and met many of you there and thank you so much. I had a wonderful time and it was fantastic to see all the great projects that are happening there. And so much has changed uh, since then. Uh, and uh, it feels like, you know, there's, a, there's an exercise that I do often when I do big talks and big workshops where I invite everybody to close their eyes and then tell them we're going to attempt the first act of time travel in the history of that place. And then we all make a kind of a humming noise to, to signify the, what the time machine sounds like. And I invite people to imagine that they are traveling forward through time to 2030. And it's not a utopian 2030, it's a 2030 where everything that could possibly have been done in the intervening 10 years was done. It was a time of phenomenal political, cultural, social, economic transformation. And we arrive uh, in a 2030 where we have reached uh, a, a zero carbon. We, we have created the most phenomenal, low carbon, zero carbon, dynamic, connected, resilient, beautiful uh, economy. It's a great exercise. And people often say the same thing. They often say, because uh, I ask them to feed back afterwards, after they've spent a couple of minutes in their imagination wandering around. I say, uh, you know, what did you see? What did you feel? What did you hear? First thing people always say is bird song. Then they say there was a lot less traffic. Then they say it was a lot quieter. The air smelled fantastic. And there was a really strong sense of kind of social cohesion. Up until about three months ago, that was quite a, a, a flight of the imagination. Actually, the last couple of months, we've just had to walk out of our front doors to, to experience that. It's been extraordinary. And it feels so important to me now that as we start to think about what comes next and how we build back better after this, that we, that we see what we have, what is, uh, where we've reached during this time in terms of car-free streets, in terms of clean air, in terms of birdsong, biodiversity. I've seen birds in my garden this year I've never seen here before. You know, that we build forward from this. This has given us a taste of what that future would feel like. We do must absolutely not discard that and throw that away. We need to build on that moving forward from here. And for me, it feels like there's such an important difference between the idea of sustainability and the idea of resilience. The idea of sustainability somehow is this sort of smooth journey to a place where we all are consuming less resources actually as we've seen with things like coronavirus as we see with climate change it's not like that it's like a series of shocks and spikes and the ability to, to to find a way through those shocks is really really important how we build in that 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 ability to flex and we always used to talk about resilience as being the ability to bounce back after a shock I increasingly think about it as being the ability to bounce forward. How do we use a shock as the ability to, uh, as, as the trigger, the catalyst to reimagine and bounce forward to something much better, something that meets our needs far, far better as we move forward from here? And so for me, that means that from now we need to be looking at how can we build an economy? How can you, as people running small and medium sized businesses, take what you do and really root it in the place where you are, to decarbonize as much as you can, but to really play a role in the local economy of that place, to create not a, just a circular economy among the businesses, but a bit of an economy of many, many, many micro circular uh, relationships so that money circulates as many times as it possibly can in that economy before it leaves. That feels to me like the big kind of economic idea of our future, really is how do we create that kind of transition economy where the money is circulating as many times as possible and enabling so much to happen. That's really what 21st century economics needs to look like, you know, that, that we're able to do that in such a way that we stay within the boundaries of the earth and the recognising that we need to be making cuts of 7 to 8% a year every year starting now. COVID-19 and the lockdown has led to about a 5.5%, 6% cut in emissions this year. We need to be doing 7 8% every year starting now and the glorious thing about that 
is that that is fundamentally a practice of the imagination. As Naomi Klein says, there are no non-radical solutions left. So this is not a time for clinging to business as usual, because business as usual does not work. This is a time for bold, brilliant, imaginative, creative thinking. And if anywhere can do that, Strasbourg can do it. And you will be, you are already doing wonderful things. Now is the time to accelerate and to ramp up all of that. And so that everybody, when we reach 2030, will look back and say, Strasbourg. They were the people who took the lead on this. If it hadn't have been for Strasbourg, you know, so go Strasbourg. This is the time for being brave, bold, brilliant and wonderful. And I wish you all the best and I hope to see you all in person sometime soon.